so yeah thanks once again uh, just giving you guys a brief agenda into today's talk uh, we'll uh, give you a brief intro into the community and into manan's profile uh, how he's moved into the role of product and then right over to manan where he talks about uh, how can accelerated um, subscriber growth without you know incentive without too many incentives so yeah and just getting started the product folks is a volunteer driven community of product managers product enthusiasts and um, we we so sorry just one minute i'm getting a response yeah yeah so sorry so yeah we are a bunch of product enthusiasts who come together to help the community grow together we have a bunch of initiatives learn pm with dot me which is a bunch of curated resources to help you upskill into the field of product management insurjo.club which is an early stage apm program and um, monthly events which um, uh, we, where we get to learn from senior pms um, about their journeys and the products they are working with so um that's it from the community end uh, over to introducing our speaker for today we have with us manan bhara from the ken uh, he's earlier had stints with deloitte he's had stints with thoughtworks uh, and he's also done an mba from the indian school of business um we are we're, we're very excited to hear about his journey into product management as well as uh, today's topic so right over to you manan and take it away Great. Hey, uh, thanks a lot, Sohas. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. I'll just quickly uh, share my screen. Okay. Um, can you all see my screen? Um, visible. Sohas or someone? Can you yes, yes, I can hear you. And okay. we can cool. see your screen as well. All right. Perfect. So, let's just start. Okay, so thank you uh, very much for joining, and uh, thanks a lot, Soha Rashmi, for having me here. I think uh, you you guys have built a fantastic platform, and uh, how you market each event is also phenomenal. Um, so uh, a bit a bit about myself. I'm a product manager at the Ken. Uh, I think we're a small team, and uh, uh, I think last year we built something that is quite interesting. Um, I'll I'll talk a bit more about the Ken later, but uh, broadly, this talk is about uh, about referrals and. Uh, uh some i'll talk in brief about how most referral programs are structured uh something that we did different and why it worked for us and how uh, each one of you can can try uh, a variation of the referral program kind of make your own version of a referral program as well um so this is the first time i'm presenting this deck uh, uh at any platform but my uh, idea is to actually improve it over time so what you see uh, below that that below is my twitter handle and i'd love to hear some feedback i think if you can you, you can mention me there uh, i i'll just look at all the feedback that you give and improve this presentation over time hopefully make it more valuable for the community and for everyone okay moving on so for those of you who uh, you know maybe are uh, new to product management or uh, even otherwise like i think uh, just to reiterate uh, referrals are nothing but there are way in which you can get your happy customers to bring in more customers right uh, all businesses grow with word of word of mouth uh, referrals are just a more formal way of doing word of mouth um, and uh, referrals sort of incentivize often incentivize uh, your existing customers to bring in more customers who get rewarded to join via referral right that that's the common theme um, and and referrals are all the rage right you can pretty much pick up any product and uh, it will have its own version of a referral referral flow and the reason for that is obviously you know uh, uh, of late uh, people uh, have you know like there are many studies that show that you know you just trust uh, your friends and colleagues a lot more uh, and this flows directly from there the next the second most trusted form of advertising is not even close to the level of trust that uh, that recommendations from the people you know uh, have you know that, that that's just the way it works so uh, that's one reason why referrals are all the rage another reason is because um you know while advertising uh, on you know just mass advertising used to be uh, lucrative for companies to do and acquire customers that way off late with uh, with monopolies being formed uh, the um, advertising is just uh, prohibitively expensive and customer acquisition cost through ads has has significantly gone up and referrals allow you to have a way in which you can still acquire customers cheaply 
and uh, this would be a very refined, very selective set of product, uh, set of customers who would also retain better and probably bring in more customers in the future. So, it's it's a way of acquiring high, higher quality customers at a lower cost. So that's predominantly why referrals uh, have become a real reason, practically you know omnipresent everywhere. And I can pretty much bet that you've seen or used a referral program of one of the products, right? They all and and the thing is really they look quite similar. You you can go. To anything and they'll all kind of have the same sort of formats and that's because good products have it down to a science right there's almost a formula uh, for referrals right there will be always these five things right uh, for example i re i recently completed a trip and uh, uh, i got an email from airbnb that simply asked me to rate my experience right uh, and they had this sort of a widget where i could say well, how my stay was well, my stay was actually great right uh, I, I enjoyed a lot and so i rated it five stars and the moment i did that uh, they took me to a landing page that was quite interesting, right? It like before it said anything else. The first thing it said was, "Why don't you invite more friends?" And this is something really interesting that Airbnb is doing, and a lesson was for probably everyone, um, which is the the timing and the place matters a lot. I just completed a trip, and uh, I had that momentum going in. Uh, I wanted to promote their product, and they found out how, right? And the moment I told them uh, that that you know I did enjoy my stay. They, they took that so they, they could perfect the timing that way and uh, they, they they perfected and, and they make the incentive for me really really clear uh, for why I, sh I should invite my friends and uh, and the reward equally clear as well uh, so so they basically check most of these things and the one thing that uh, is missing here they check on the next screen which is when you actually go to invite any of your friends uh, they give you multiple options you could just very easily import all of your contact list from email uh, you could you could send the send send the invite link you using any uh, any P two P service that you have. So, and this is the exhaustive set pretty much. Okay, this is what you see in all referral products. Uh, this is for example CureFit, right? Again, uh, very clearly just upfront telling you what's what you get, what does your friend get if you refer them, and then there's there's easy ways to share. Uh, this is Danzo. Again, they give you a very easy option to pick people who are on your who are on your contact list but haven't joined Dunzo yet, and they they frame it in a way where look based on the number of people who haven't joined Dunzo in your contact list, it's so much you can make so much money, right? Um, and then they give you some easy options to share. Uh, this is Healthify Me. Again, this is down to the very core. They just talk about the incentive, just talk about the reward, and then ask you to share. That's it, right? Uh, often products just try too hard. Uh, for example, this is uh, this is one of the apps. I think it's called Smitten, and uh, it kind of uh, tries to do a little too much. It it, it has uh, it, it the the main CTA itself kind of gets camouflaged. I see a big zero. I'm not sure why, but broadly, like you know, they they all try to do the same thing. Um, uh, so so with that, uh, I take you to the Ken. Right. Uh, so we are a three-year-old uh, media company. Um, we we turned three last October, and we were the first first one to do uh, purely a subscription-driven play. Um, at the Ken, we have an experienced team of journalists, and we essentially uh, write stories about business, startups, uh, healthcare, technology, uh, and we do one story a day, uh, as compared to uh, a lot of media companies, which uh, you know. Uh, churn out dozens and dozens of stories. We do just one story a day, and we we try to solve the quality problem instead of the quantity that everybody else seems to be driving. Um, and over time, like we we've consistently written uh, stories that matter. Uh, we were the first ones, for example, who broke the news that WhatsApp was bringing UPI payments to India, and we've done really important stories in the recent past. We continue doing them. Uh, and and the stories get actually create a lot of buzz, right? Uh, a lot of our subscribers are influential, uh, or you know they just they just tend to share uh, on social media. Often they tend to talk about our stories in their network. So so with that, uh, uh, the the most important point though is that being a subscription only player, uh, and we have a hard paywall, right? What does that mean? Uh, essentially, paywalls. Um, uh, uh, can be either hard paywalls or metered paywalls. So often what you see in most journalism outlets is that they would have metered paywalls in which they would allow you to sample some of the stories without having to pay up. Uh, we're not we're not that publication. We essentially, every story or most of our stories are actually behind a hard paywall. And to be able to read most of the, all stories, you need to have a subscription. 
you do have an option to read a single story though right and uh, and we, we we mentioned it on the paywall you have to pay uh, 590 bucks to read a single story so there is a tangible value that is associated with each each story so rewind uh, to feb 2019 and we said that uh, we have to define a referral product for the ken and and at that point in time uh, we were at we just hit 10000 subscribers uh, 10000 paid subscribers now typically 10000 is not a huge number especially for mass market products but for a purely subscription driven player it's actually substantial and this is important because referrals kind of the, the basic thing with referrals is you need a substantial base that is willing to advocate for your product so this was the critical time at which we could do a referral product we had just hit 10000 which was a significant number and we we could see potential in it uh, helping us grow and all of these 10000 subscribers were uh, organically added uh, till then we didn't have any form of uh, trial any form of uh, uh, paid marketing any form of uh, referral product till then it was just through pure word of mouth referrals right um interestingly we 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 saw uh, when we began we, we saw okay what how do how do these word of mouth referrals even work till now we've gotten this growth how can we leverage the and can we is there anything that we can leverage from that uh, and so there was something interesting that came out of it um, so we were looking at uh, where our users come from uh, and we verified that uh, a, a significant chunk uh, of of users were actually coming through the direct channel uh which means that they were not driven through any marketing campaign that we were doing they were not driven through social media marketing they were not um driven through a referral referring website but it was plain uh, a plain link that they might have entered in their uh, url bar or shared uh, somebody had shared the link which is much more likely right uh, a link that is shared with them so often these are links that are uh, shared on a big whatsapp group uh, or or a big email group uh which brings a lot of people uh, and creates a lot of hype that way so it was uh subscribers were already uh talking about us and then we, we dug a bit deeper and what we realized was that four fifths of this uh, direct traffic was actually landing on individual stories themselves we were like okay this seems like there is a significant demand for stories but as i mentioned earlier the stories are currently behind a paywall which means that a lot of these people are are coming there uh because somebody told them about the story but they're not able to read the story right and some of them um, go on and subscribe or buy a story but but uh, naturally you know in your first experience a lot of them would just be bouncing off and we validated our understanding uh, we, we 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 did a subscriber only survey and uh, what came out of it was that um, a large number of our subscribers actually wanted the ability to share articles to gift uh, our, our stories to others uh and uh, and tell them about the stories or discuss a topic that the story was talking about uh with them uh so i think this was proof enough and and you know the, this challenge is a very long held belief you know that that a lot of people have so traditionally the belief is that paywalls limit the value it it you prevent value from getting to other people but what we realized was that in this case uh paywalls were actually unlocking value for us because these stories were behind a paywall um they were worth sharing they had they had significant value and uh, people would like to receive them right uh, if 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 you can't read if you can't have access to it um uh, on your own and somebody can grant you access to it you want it right so 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 that was something that happened and so um of course you know if there is a set behavior uh, that you can ride on i think that should be the first cue that should be the first thing that you should put your money on when you're thinking referrals because you know changing behavior making people do something new like you know completely disconnected going going completely tangential and uh, asking people to refer that is going to be much harder than just plugging into an existing user behavior i'll talk a bit more about this uh, a bit later as well uh, so we were very clear <laughs> it was like uh, you know it had to be a story without the reward that you give to someone else it was just very clear it had to be a story uh, nothing else would have as big of an impact as a story but there was still the question of uh, you know why would someone give a story right uh, what is in it for them and what is going to be the incentive so so we actually spent a bit of time uh, thinking about it and then we realized that you know if if there is tangible value that is associated with the reward uh, and and there's exclusivity and scarcity 
uh, with regards to how many people can actually give out that value uh, i think you could hammer that uh, that communication in throughout your product you could actually build your product uh, revolve around the scarcity and the exclusivity of that and that is pretty much going to be giving you the similar results and uh, we we looked for it right there, there was there was enough precedence so um if you if you know superhuman is a, is an email client that has been in an invite only beta i think for over a year now um and uh, it is an email client <laughs> and it you know like email clients nobody is even saying there's a problem with it and they built uh, an email client saying it's the fastest email experience they made it invite only um and even after you get in you have to pay 30 dollars a month uh, to subscribe to this service uh so so they're basically riding on this thing called scarcity value which is if you limit supply of something if uh, if it's not available in the mass market that increases the relative price or uh, or the demand itself uh, and that drives the price or the value that someone gets from the product itself so this is what happens when you actually end up when you sign up uh, for an invite on uh, on superhuman you get an email from the ceo that says you know we'll get to you when we can uh, but in the meantime you could reach out to someone who's already in who's got access to superhuman and they can once they invite you you're in so this is uh, there's a lot of interesting ideas here and and superhuman isn't the only company doing it right uh, but there are a lot of interesting ideas here the more you limit access the more there is this buzz that is created uh, because ultimately all of us want something that is extremely exclusive uh, superhuman also added something uh, called as a sent by a superhuman which which ended up being like a status signal uh and because very few people had it uh and uh, you would be taken much more seriously that way so so that also created a lot of buzz and as i said right superhuman isn't the only one who's doing it gmail was invite only behance i think still continues to be invite only facebook started um, uh, with a very select uh, group uh, only harvard uh, students and quora was influencer only only so so there is precedence for it but okay so marketing scarcity is common uh but how do you productize it right that that was that was the challenge so so we did a lot of things uh when we built uh, our referral offering to sort of hammer the idea that this is very exclusive this is very scarce uh first thing was that this is not sharing right um this is not sharing because sharing is mass right um if you share a story it, it already is uh it already devalues it instead it is a gift right uh, and uh, and you know gifts are valuable um gifts are also uh, you know uh, so so it had to be a gift and uh, and gifts come at a cost right so even if you're not paying um, for a, for a, for the story gift yourself the stories do have value so it has to be limited if you're saying that the limited supply was what was driving up value and now you say that no uh, we can allow unlimited uh, story gifting that that kind of uh, defies the de defeats the purpose itself so we had to limit it and uh, and so it was rolled out only to paying subscribers even among the paying subscribers it was rolled out to only subscribers who had at least one year of subscription um and not to uh, shorter tenure subscribers and uh, and a and we also had gift credits that kind of limited how many how many stories you could gift um for starters we started with uh, with five gift credits we had a you know long drawn back and forth on this uh, uh, how much growth are we seeking what is uh, the potential for cannibalization we kept all this in mind we said okay five seems to be a reasonable number and we we uh, and if if we are giving uh, too few gift credits then we actually gave um a way for people to request more credits but if they request more credits they come at a cost there is a tangible value that the money that you have to pay to get more credits so that that was the idea um uh, again with as we are in currency you should be able to keep track of it uh, so when once you send out a story gift um you can actually track what happened to it did did someone uh, unlock it is it still not unlocked so for example uh, in this case for example it, it, i gifted the story to someone and uh, they had not unlocked it so what i could do is i could copy the link from uh, from my uh, gifting tracker and actually resend it to them or send it to someone else so so, so basically because they're limited in supply we could promote uh, you know uh, repurposing or reuse of existing gifts uh and and lastly gifts are beautiful right so they are they they warm they're personal and they're beautiful so when someone receives it they feel nice right 
So that, that is a core idea uh, that we emphasized here. Uh, we understood that word of mouth referrals worked because it was trusted and we wanted to maintain that same trust uh, when someone received a story gift as well. So uh, it, as you see, like the first screen that you see once you try to unlock your story gift is you see a picture of the person who's gifted you the story, uh, you see uh, what the gift is uh, and the message, right? And, uh, and then we allow you to uh, sign up really easily from there. And just by, just by zero marketing interventions, uh, zero uh, you know, incentives, uh, material incentive, 20% uh, of new subscribers gift stories within the first month they're joining. Uh, at least one story is gifted by 20% of subscribers. Um, and that, that happens again, fully naturally, right? Um, so exclusivity and scarcity can serve as enough incentive by themselves to drive referrals. But as I explained, there are five things that went into, and as I said, it's down to a science, right? So timing, place, and convenience are super important as well. So we asked ourselves, okay, what is the right time to ask someone to refer a story? And again, you know, like the, 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 the answer was, uh, pretty clear once we decided that it had to be a story that you're gifting. Uh, and so it actually uh, was very easy to tie in with where, when do we nudge someone? And this goes back to a question that I think all product managers try and answer. Um, I think the first thing that you want to understand about your own product is at what stage does the user experience uh, the value of your product for the first time? Uh, a new, new person using your product, at what stage do they experience the true value of your product. And that is the moment we realized when they're most susceptible or, or you know, they, they're most likely to actually promote you. So, so I think this is, this is the moment that uh, we, look, we were looking for. Uh, as a side note, there, there's a this fantastic talk. If you haven't heard of it, um, it's by Chamat Palipitlia, uh, who used to be the VP of growth at Facebook uh, when they were doing some really crazy stuff. I think I, I completely urge you guys to watch that talk. It has some fantastic insights. Uh, and then I think, I think a, a, a large bit of it, uh, you know, we could say that it's all about timing convenience, but broadly it's about forming a habit, right? And uh, so we looked at a lot of habit forming products. And uh, so Nireal has this book called Hooked, which talks about how habit forming products actually build that habit over time. And I think his first argument is that you have to have a trigger uh, and then triggers uh, nudge sort of start to build a certain behavior where they nudge people to take an action and then the action has to be as simple as possible uh, and as convenient as possible uh, for, for users to do it and as soon as they take an action there should be a reward that they get which promotes them to make the same investment next time so that that's the, the, the whole framework in short uh, and over time uh, you don't need the external triggers anymore because the habit is built and the users would do it by themselves and for this, we had the perfect tool. So I think uh, the Ken, uh, one, one major significant lever for engagement is the app. So subscribers of the Ken ha get access to the subscriber only app. Uh, and I think we, we use this very well for, especially for gifting. Um, so once you've read a story, once you've completed reading a story, 10 minutes later, we would send you a, a push notification. This would be the external trigger. And it would urge you to sort of claim uh, your subscriber benefit and, uh, and give the story that you just read to someone who may benefit from it. Um, and over time, you know, once, once this habit is built, then as people are reading the story itself, they would notice the gifting icon, uh, and, and they would, they would give, give stories by themselves. Uh, what happened was that, uh, and so the gift gifting icon was placed, uh, very, uh, you know, prominently on the story screen itself. But what we realized was that whatever you do, uh, referrals should not come in the way of the main product experience itself. And the, the app was meant to be a reader. So, uh, so in this case, I think we, we learned from uh, a couple of iterations and what we did was um, the, the gift icon would, would be in place only for the top 10% of the story. Like once you scroll beyond the title section and the strap line and the summary bullets, uh, the gifting icon would disappear. And then once you've experienced the story, once you've read it, once you understand it, once you've made up your mind towards the last 20% or 15% of the story, the gift icon would again pop up. And then you could, you could just give the story that it would serve as an additional nudge that way. And then, you know, once, once you gift, uh, once you create a gift link, there, there's just, there's, we just allow you to share them uh, in very easy ways. Uh, again, 
taking our learnings from the direct traffic analysis that we had done earlier, uh, a lot of people have just embraced WhatsApp as the tool of choice for this. So we had to give them a direct uh, gift via WhatsApp option. And this is like today, like the most used option to give stories to anybody else, right? We also emphasize that uh, once you gifted something to someone, you can track your gifts in account settings. So this is where we emphasize value once again. So over time, this is what happened, right? Um, so we had initially launched gifting of stories uh, on the web and I think there was a slight delay on the app. I think there was a one or two week delay after which we launched it on the app. And over time, uh, just it, it, it was crazy how much people were using the app to give stories as compared to the web. Uh, this, this, this data is still dated, right? It's, uh, I haven't updated, I think I put it together a while back, uh, but this number has been growing. Like the app continues to be the predominant way through which people share stories today. And that's because we built a habit, right? Um, so subscribers who gift one story are 65% more likely to gift another story within the same month right? as compared to subscribers who haven't yet gifted a, a story. Um, so I think this goes to show how, you know, each, each time you take an action, you just far more likely to take that action again. So that's, that's like we're building habit there. So, yeah. So over time, um, you know, there was just also some, uh, habit on the other side where, which, which is about adoption. So when you give someone else a story, uh, how do you get them to adopt it? Right. Again, uh, emphasizing, uh, the, the birth nature of the gift, um, and, uh, you know, the, the relevant and the concrete value that they'll get by having the story right there, uh, which emphasizes, okay, this is what you will get. Uh, and then giving them convenience of, uh, choosing a method to sign up. Right. Uh, so, uh, if you use, uh, Facebook or Google, you can sign up in like one tap, uh, versus if you're conscious about privacy and as I am, uh, if you don't want to give your, uh, information to Google or Facebook, you could always choose to just sign up using email ID and password. And then, you know, once you, once you build it this way, we, 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 uh, we got a lot of qualitative feedback from, from, uh, non-subscribers, uh, who, who posted on, on social media about this, where they would just talk about how their experience was of getting this gift, uh, and, you know, unlocking, activating it and, uh, how it made them feel. And, uh, so, so this was positive reinforcement that we were looking for. Um, uh, of course it took us <laughs> a lot of iterations to get here. But what you see here is like the final end, end result of this. Right. Um, so to summarize, I think I'm, I'm mostly done. So to summarize, I think the first thing is for us to understand where uh, users experience value in the product. Where do they get the maximum value? And that, that aha moment is, is the best place to drive referrals from. Um, incentive or no incentive, that there are things that just that, that is just product management principles that all of us have to have to remember and embrace, right? Um, you don't necessarily need to follow all five points, right? Uh, a lot of companies do well without following all five to the book. For example, we chose to do away with incentives and use a combination of scarcity, exclusivity, and habit formation. Um, a different combination can work for you. I think the, the point is to understand the framework before you can choose to say, I'm not following the framework, but I guess the first point is, is to know that what the framework is, right? And the last bit is that it just quickly falls apart. Uh, if you're not giving a convenient options, uh, that, that people would use, for example, I don't think this could have been as successful without using say a lever like WhatsApp, um, or, or something like that. So I think this, this is really important and always remember that for non-subscribers who are getting referred, the primary uh, uh, platform on which their first experience is of your product, it's going to be on mobile. So uh, you have to optimize uh, obviously for, uh, for their first experience, because that is what goes into building, building a habit or, or basically them realizing the value of your product. Okay. That's all I had. Awesome. 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 Thanks so much. Uh, Monan, just give me a minute. Sure. Yeah, we live. Thanks so much. I think I love the deck personally and very, very interesting points into Ken's referral journey. So that was great. Thanks so much for sharing. We have a bunch of questions on the Slido link. So I'll pick the most upvoted ones that we have. I think um, we have around 18 questions. Um, we have about 15 minutes. So let's see how many we can cover in case we have more time. We're, we're happy to, we're happy to cover more. So, um, 
to pick to pick the one that's right on top uh, this experiment of gift a story worked really well for the ken uh could you also share some experiments that you did that might not have worked for you some failed experiments and what were your key learnings how do you go about this process right right and i think this is actually a good question i, I was meaning to include something while uh, while i was overshoot so i think uh, i think the gift story itself was not our first experiment okay i would uh, i wouldn't say that we have been nailed it from the get go right i mean i think i personally uh, believed that there is a set schema in people's mind where they understand what sharing means and they won't understand what gifting means so my first hunch was actually why don't we just do sharing right everybody understands it we'll get massive adoption that way um and it took me a while to come to terms with this as well so so we tried that uh i think uh, i think in initial user feedback we, we we realized that that's just that's just not valuable enough and people you know without incentives and if you if you just uh, using a mass mass phrase like sharing it just doesn't work so that was one we did a lot a lot of experiments on the first onboarding screen of referred users i think um initially we started off by just telling them okay this is the story and this person has gifted it to you and we had just a single way of signing up uh, which was email and then we were noticing um, a large amount of drop off at that stage itself uh, and the realization there was for example um that people were doing it on mobile so i think we we tried a couple of ideas there we tried the photo uh there and we saw saw the bump uh by using that uh, we tried including social icons and uh, we were worried uh you know what would be the impact of social icons because a lot of people actually don't have a very high perception about having facebook uh right up on your uh, you know first first impression that they see so so we we, we did a bunch of experiments there um but overall yeah so so i think we we got a significant jump in activations of these gifts because uh, remember that to people who are hearing about you for the first time uh it really has to come across as a valuable thing for them to even give you their email address because they don't know your a uh, premium subscriber only communication you can mention it as many times as you want but it's their first experience so so i think it is really important um to kind of keep experimenting and just play on convenience uh on that screen uh i think uh Uh, that that is something i would uh, and i think we did a bunch of experiments again uh, around uh, the the methods that you could use to gift stories uh, for example initially i think uh, we had links uh, just just create a link and share it the way you want right uh, and then we realized that uh, a lot of people still prefer using email uh, as 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 a way of sending and the great thing about email is that you could do a single reminder email as well for example you could get a bump that way so yeah i think it's just been a lot of iterations there um, oh, yeah. uh, the, the visual nature of it uh, has changed a lot over time got it got it man and if i can ask you a follow up there in case you were to design an experiment from scratch how do you uh, are there some i mean i'm pretty sure there will be some success metrics that you define up front right so what are some things that you do before or while designing an experiment and how do you measure the success or failure in case it's not working i should scrap it out how do you decide that right right i think i think that's fair so uh, i think especially talking about referral products i think all of them kind of have a, um an activation uh, based um target sort of a thing where in okay. how many of your engaged users uh, mm-hmm. refer people uh, how many people uh, do you add using the how many people activate those referrals uh, how many new people you get through that and then how many of those new people end up making a purchase usually this is the funnel uh, that you're aiming for with any referral product um, okay. and i think i think any experiment that i define would focus on one of one of these four and then um, uh, my my goal was would always be to see uh, uh, to do like a comparison uh, with you know uh, on on this metric basically am i able to get more of my engaged users to refer others am i able to um, uh, you know get more activations from people who have been referred something like that got it got it got it thanks um, another interesting question is um, about early days so referral program might work great when you have an existing user base but how did you acquire your first 50 users and did the paywall exist for them if yes how did you communicate the value up front 
Uh, I think that's a great question. I'm <laughs> I I can attempt to answer it, but I won't say because I was not there. Uh, yeah, and, exactly. But but I've heard heard stories about it, and I think yeah. uh, a lot of lessons from what happened in the initial launch of the Ken powered mm-hmm. what happened in the launch of the Ken Southeast Asia, which is our our latest subscription product that we launched. Um, so I so I have some idea of how it worked. I think. Uh, I think initially it was an experiment to see interest, to see a, 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 a market fit for the product. Wherein I think the frequency at which we did stories was lower, but we were putting out one insightful story for mm-hmm. people to read mm-hmm. uh, by just entering their entering their email address and signing up on a paywall. Uh, right. And they, they didn't have to uh, pay upfront for an initial uh, you know waitlist period of sorts. And then uh, I think I think we ran in that phase for about a month or so, and then uh, we we got to a place where we decided on the launch date. And then because of all the buzz created in that invite only period or in that uh, limited beta period, uh, yeah. we got a huge bump uh, when we launched. So I think that was the approach the Ken took, um, from what I know. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, fair enough. Fair enough. Thanks for sharing that. Um, next two questions. Uh, I'll generalize them a little bit. Was the Ken's model derived from an other existing player in the Indian market, or do you think this was really, really new? And the second part is, uh, uh, how expensive do you think it is when comparing to the Indian market, especially for Indian subscribers? Uh, what is your take on the pricing that you currently have with the Ken? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I think. Uh, i'd be lying if i said that the like the idea of being able to exclusively share articles is new right i mean it's not right? i won't i won't say it is i think uh, a lot of publications have it but um and, and a lot of publications do uh, scarce scarcity marketing as well so i think what i try to walk through in this presentation is is broadly my answer which is that doing a lot of these things together is probably a unique thing um but i think you'll see this being done in pockets here and there i know that mm-hmm. financial times has a limited sharing of stories available i know that um any of the indian players i think they have an option to share full articles uh, if you're uh, if you're a paid subscriber um but i think a lot of what we did uh, around uh, uh you know productizing the scarcity and exclusivity aspect of it and that that i think came um from perhaps scarcity marketing companies or you know some some uh, some invite only marketing uh, players uh, and and then the research on that i don't think all of it combined into one was a particularly uh, was a thing that was already done before got it got it fair point and on the second bit your thoughts on the pricing especially with given to the indian subscriber base it's actually i think hmm, i'm wondering what okay so Do you want me to rephrase that? Uh, maybe you could. Uh... No, no I, I I get the question. Um, okay. I guess what I'm trying to say is that so the annual subscription to the Ken uh, currently is three two four five INR. Okay. And, uh-huh. and it works out to roughly what two fifty bucks a month, right? Uh-huh. And people today, I think if you do comparison, if you if you see uh, you know competitor driven pricing or or even uh-huh. comparison driven pricing, right? people end up paying a lot more for many other products um, so similar products ha huh, matlab uh, similar as in yeah so there there would be uh, media product. yeah media uh, entertainment content uh, i think netflix right. uh, for example is one example yeah. uh, so so i won't say that we are overpriced i think i think one mm-hmm. thing that, that often shocks people is that um, it's it's an annual subscription and uh, you know we were asking people to pay up front an amount Mm-hmm. And, and there are strategic reasons for doing that i think um customer retention becomes a lot easier when managed uh, through these longer term plans and uh, i think i think we we've, we've experimented with a monthly subscription plan uh, before and i i yeah. think we've burned our hands and we, i don't think that works well got it got it uh, do you believe uh, this is a mass market pro- uh, a product or do you believe that this might be say a uh, top 10% like a cred model like you know you are only looking at a particular section of the subscriber base so i think nothing that the ken has done uh, 
is for the mass market so far uh, i think i think already once you pick a domain of uh, business news um, you already exactly uh, narrow down the market but i think even there uh, we double down and uh, we try to we we're not a mass market product i think in our product thinking itself uh most mass market ideas are most often shot down i think we use mass marketing marketing approaches uh, um, uh to basically uh, spread word about the product but never uh, give out the value uh, of the publication itself to right. the mass market that's that's right. just not the most we operate and like uh, we've never done discounting we've uh, never done any trials right. so yeah so i think i think all of us at the can Uh, fundamentally don't see us as a mass market uh, offering got it got it got it thanks for that um, another question is around probably i think there are a bunch of questions around can maybe i'll just pick one or two around this um could you explain how the nut graph and beyond first order fit into your entire overall product strategy or uh, is it a freemium driven model that you're trying there or are you trying to or is uh, are you able to see adoption of the main product because of these two because i think they're really quality articles from what i see <laughs> that's a great question so i think i think all all strategies that we make at the can <laughs> at least at least from when i've joined uh, tend to evolve and really quickly right uh, i think i think we're not a firm that sets a five year strategy right so i think we are beyond first order and under of um yeah so so i think the approach was uh to offer a uh, an engagement tool to uh, get subscribers uh, continue to read the can beyond our stories and b to of course uh, tap into virality and get uh, a, a stronger top of funnel um but things change and you know we're we're evolving our products all the time i think uh, i think i won't say that uh i think i think there's some really good response to both the nut graph and beyond first order uh and uh, i think seeing that response uh our strategy will evolve over time got it got it um i think yeah another bunch of questions around pricing and your subscriber base around uh, i mean I'll, i'll just try to club this but i think you've covered most of it uh it's around do you see india as a price sensitive market maybe maybe not uh before you hit 10k organic users okay, i think you you covered this so a bunch of questions around you know initial user base how did you get the word out so you know maybe a freemium model is what you shared this uh, interesting question do you see the southeast asia market similar to the market in india where you've recently launched or what are your right. initial learnings so far right right i'm glad you asked so i think i think we're still very nascent there right uh, it's, yeah. it's really really early days we we gotten some early feedback uh, which is promising uh, and uh, makes us think that we are very close to hitting product market fit right? um mm-hmm. yeah we we i think it's a it's a really really nascent stage right now but we are all very like super excited and i think with southeast asia uh, it's not like uh, the ken was in india because uh, a lot of things that we tried and failed in india we know uh, we're not going to try in southeast asia and a lot of things that worked in india we're already trying in southeast asia so i think um, it will be really interesting to see where it goes right now i think the initial um, uh, subscriber base that we've got is great and uh, they've given us some really good feedback about stories about the newsletter um, so so broadly like i think we're, we're close to hitting product market fit there but um, but it's still really really early Yeah. So you you don't see this as a ceiling, right? Like in India, it's not not that you launched Southeast Asia because you were hitting like a ceiling in India. I think like it's obviously it's much. I think it's just more. another market you're testing, right? That's. Yeah, 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 absolutely right. So I think uh, I think it's it's more of a I I don't think that growth in India is slowing down by any measure, yeah. and uh, I I think Southeast Asia is just one more market where we saw potential and a gap in the market, and that's why we went there. Uh, I think the India market is. is just huge right nice. so i don't think we are uh, with any exactly. to saturating that exactly exactly i think yeah that was one of the questions i think the ceiling was also one of the questions um i think a bunch of new questions coming around you know i think this one's interesting it's around the mobile product so how did you go uh, how do you guys start thinking about the mobile product um uh, was it was it user driven insights was it because maybe you thought push notifications might drive some more you know retention for you what is the thought process and how did you guys start there right um so i think 
the the idea uh, with uh, with doing gifting uh, with doing a, a lot of the things is to add more value for existing subscribers right and uh, the app was one such thing as well uh, and i think it was a significant thing right beyond uh, giving them another story a day this is probably the big one big thing that we did for existing paid subscribers wherein we said that you could read during commute uh, and you know the experience will be catered uh, you know according to your device and uh and, and and that was probably the first uh, idea in mind again this is before me but uh, if i were to do it today i would still do it and the reason being that you know it it, it just get allows us to engage uh, customers a lot uh, engage subscribers a lot more um mm-hmm. especially uh, like even without push notifications even without anything um it's just a great reading experience and uh, uh we we launched a new app for android by the way uh, i don't know If, uh, uh, if there are subscribers here, but the new new app for Android uh, is an even better reading experience. So, uh, I think the reading experience itself adds a lot of value. And then, secondary thing is that it gives us another engagement channel uh, to to market new features, new products, stories, uh, drive uh, uh, drive virality, sharing, uh, and all that. Fair point. Fair point. A uh, bunch of questions around uh, the current numbers. So, whatever is public, what are your current subscribers around? I think I've got three questions. I tried keeping it out, but just asking you from whatever you can share in the public domain. I think the last public number that we shared is fifteen thousand plus subscribers, and I <laughs> I am not allowed to say. Yeah, I know that's completely fine. Yeah, fifteen thousand, uh, including both, right? Across. I think the last uh, announcement was actually. Way back in the middle of last year, so at that point there okay, was no okay. such thing for products, so no, it doesn't. Okay. okay, awesome, awesome. Thanks for that. I think uh, a lot more questions are f- coming in for the Ken, but maybe I'll just jump ship because there are a couple of general PM questions, and maybe we'll pick one or two towards the end. So I think uh, we've overshot the time, but maybe nine more minutes, and let's see how much we can cover. If that's okay for you, nine minutes. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Awesome. So. Um, Uh, on the pm front someone asked how was your journey at isv uh, what are your thoughts on mba requirement for product management specifically uh, okay um so look i think there are two kinds of people one who go into an mba knowing that they want to do product management and yeah. i think they can really leverage, leverage a lot of what is taught during an mba because there are subjects that i use practically every day right um uh, pricing subjects marketing analytics or customer uh, customer analytics so these are these are some really really important questions and especially for a subscription business it, they make like they, it's like you could literally pick up uh, exact notes and apply them so so i think that way if you know what that you're going to go into product management there are things that you can leverage uh, from your mba now i i think there should not be a mandate uh, uh, to do an mba though i think uh, most of the um, i think there's there's a uh, there's a sort of a ground up uh, first principles thinking that is required uh, for for product managers to succeed and i think uh, that's not something that an mba necessarily teaches you uh, it gives you a lot of more a lot more knowledge which which i mean uh, if you think which step there are many ways of acquiring that but I don't think that an MBA is is any mandate to get into product management. Uh, I do think that uh, it opens like to get a job into product management simplifies things a lot because finding a job outside of a B school placement uh, tends to be really hard. I I tried that myself. So my first job out of uh, B school was not a product management job, and uh, then switching was much harder. So I was kind of wishing during an MBA that I wish I'd just opted for uh, a product management role there, but uh but yeah so, so i think that way like it can facilitate uh you getting into a product management firm just by principle of there will be companies coming to recruit product managers at, at b schools so from a learning perspective there's not necessarily uh, a severe advantage that an mba person has over a non mba person got it how do you look at the roi do you uh, i think that was the second part of the question so how does one think about investing i mean it's again an investment right so how how do you personally look at it and if there are any you know line of thought that that we can take away from here right right so i think i i'm actually i think i'm one of the few people who actually 
don't don't look at the MBA as a as a pure ROI thing because I I sort of have um, sort of this understanding. Okay, so so broadly, a lot of people who get into B schools uh, yeah. get a very um, uh, what, what, uh, a very good uh, interest rate education loan, right? And once you get that, it's uh, it's actually not a bad idea to go through that, and and that kind of makes a lot of financial sense to do an MBA because um, over a period of time you can pay off that loan and it's not a big dent uh, mm. in the salary that you get out of an MBA school. So that way, I I, I personally don't look at uh, the ROI. Uh, as, as I never went in thinking that way, right? And and even today, like about, about two years after an MBA, I still don't worry about uh, ROI per se because um yeah i mean i i think it's a good deal the the loan that you pick up uh, but of course you know it's it's a different situation for everyone so i can only say uh, you know what i face so for me like uh, i think the the yeah the whole mechanics of you getting into b school on an education loan kind of make it work uh, really well and i don't have to think about uh, an roi a lot got it got it thanks so much um the questions are just flowing in, so I'll probably just limit this to two questions. Uh, from back to Ken again, I think because most of the questions are here. Yeah. So um, uh, one of the interesting. So what's next for Ken? What is the what is the current growth challenge that you are trying to solve, and what is it something that really excites you about the next couple of months? Or I think uh, I think it's one one world bind after another. I think there's there's something big that we're doing again and. Uh, so I think at least for this year, like I already know, you know, we have a mad lineup of things uh, to do. I, I think uh, the broader challenges that uh, that the Ken kind of uh, faces is, um, I, I think, I think, so we we fundamentally we've been very good at product led growth, uh, uh -huh. referrals and getting more subscribers through existing subscribers. I think we're we're exploring ways of uh, get, breaking through like. You know that that being a good channel, we're trying to get ways of in which we can add inorganic sort of growth um, outside of you know just uh, just product led growth. Uh, okay. So that is one challenge, and um, and obviously you know uh, retention is something that is that is always a problem. That you it's a game of inches, and you can keep fighting it. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that that's that's another big challenge that we are trying to solve. And a lot of thing a lot of things that we do uh, within within this year will will target. Um, you know, increasing retention even more. So, so that's nice. nice. So um, another follow-up question to that, just clubbing another one that I have here is um, how do you perceive growth? Like how do you define that growth? Uh, if you can share, if you can share, uh, what is a North Star metric for a media business like the Ken? Oh, uh, hmm. <laughs> you know, like the Ken, right? So, yeah, there are not many businesses uh, who are exactly pure play consumer SaaS uh, and and in media. Yeah, but, but there maybe are... maybe uh, specifically a paywalled driven driven. It can be media or anything which is paywall. So I think uh, see for for a sustainability perspective, I think all subscription businesses uh, so, are yeah. healthy healthy MRR. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, a recurring revenue stream uh, that gives you predictability for. The longest period. That's that's kind of what I think is the north star. Um, but then you know we we operate in pockets, uh, and then when you look at um, just new subscriber growth is one thing, and then um, uh, you know growth through existing subscriber like retention and referrals are one thing. So so those things we measure. But I think in terms of the north star, it's very clear to us that you know we're all uh, always looking at MRR because ultimately uh, you know the challenge with most media businesses. Uh, ends up being sustainability, and that right. is, is something that is solved through a healthy business um, with the, with a predictable revenue stream. Fair point. Fair point. Um, another popular question, which has come right on top right now, is uh, PMM versus PM, like product management versus product marketing. What are your thoughts on this? So, right at the Ken, we. Uh, we have a very strong emphasis. Like it's it's maddening how uh, how everybody is uh, so crazy about uh, product marketing, uh, communication, uh, and uh, basically subscriber communication, especially. So mm -hmm. I think 
over uh, over the year that i have been with the can i have uh, i have personally also become one who's who's you know i fundamentally see great value in uh, you know clutter free crisp concrete warm copy or uh, warm product marketing uh, 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 channels uh, uh, communication and all um but but yeah i mean i i think uh, I, i so my take on product marketing uh, management is that uh, i think uh, it, it's uh, so one, one thing as i mentioned uh, there, there's there's definitely value and i think what pro- product marketing managers should focus on is uh, is you know roi through uh, product marketing but like i don't see why you have to say product ma- manager and product marketing manager in the same place they're, they're actually very fundamentally two different, different things and uh, both are very critical and very essential and they both can work really well together so mm-hmm. i mean yeah they they both quite fundamentally important and different got it got it and maybe the last question for today but as this club because there are a bunch of questions around this clubbing three questions here is around the aha moment when a reader reads an article for ken so if you can take us through i'm i'm not sure if this is something you're involved in but if you have any idea around how do you all come up with the content piece and the second part would be um uh, uh, what is the aha moment that you guys are optimizing for the user so if if there is any link if you can just walk us through that that'll be great so um i think there's there's generally uh, we we've actually put out a blog post uh, okay. that that answers some part of first question which is uh, okay. we we talk about how how we select our stories and what is the criteria uh, for uh, for selecting a, a story for the ken for example hmm. uh, and it talks about uh, you know like so anything of value uh, has to be non obvious and that that's uh, that's kind of you know we we look for uh, stories in which um, there is some sort of a, a, a conflict so to say some sort of a uh, you know um, complexity uh, in in the story itself uh so i think that's that's broadly how we pick up stories there's, there's a lot more that goes into it and uh, it's yeah. probably a talk in itself uh and, I, and yeah i mean i i know some bit of it and there are people who can speak better than me as well but i think it's 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 good to take up that as a separate topic of conversation For on sure. the aha moment i think um, right so I, see in most cases uh it is an experienced thing that that users experience and not something that you um like you have to have it right but once you have it and once you know it um you just need to get your users faster and faster to it and more more and more often to it right um so so i guess you know uh, how do we optimize for the aha moment we we basically have stories that give them that uh, over and over again and that is the content right that is the main driving factor here uh yeah and then there's obviously you know the distribution of it how do how do you how do you communicate uh, how do you communicate the story the journalism uh, you know uh, so all that aspect is, is is surrounding it but yeah the crux of it is we are a journalism product we we are an editorial product and i think right. uh, the value that is driven from the product is inside the story itself so just uh, putting out good stories that great value are, uh, are essential for sure for sure i think uh, there are a bunch of new questions coming in but i'm so sorry guys i tried my best to cover as many as we could here uh, feel free to tweet out your questions and tag man and i'm pretty sure he'll be able to pick up a couple of them i i think a couple of interesting ones that are coming in especially around your subscription around your monetization around your pricing but unfortunately we're running out of time so uh, I love this session Manan personally thank you so much today for joining us uh, I think I think we've got a great community these were some amazing questions um, yes absolutely fortunately yep yep and if you guys like the session feel free to shout out some feedback for Manan uh, this is his first deck uh, first time he's presenting this new deck so he'd love to have some feedback we'll also be sharing a feedback form but you could reach Manan what would be the best way to reach out to you So I'm I'm manan at the ken.com um okay. if so uh, if you have anything to know about the ken you can always email me uh, or I'm at twitter at that uh, that handle 
Awesome. So if, if there's anything that publicly that he can share, tweet it out to him. If there's something that you'd like to ask him privately, you have his email ID. And yeah, with that, thanks once again, Manan. Thanks once again to all of you for joining us today. And do let us know your feedback. Give us a shout out if you liked it and let us know what you'd like to see next. Hope to see you guys in the next episode. Stay safe. See you again.